So now I've started it. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. We um, missed all that interesting diamond yeah. story. <laughs> Shoot. <laughs> now we have, okay. Uh, well, anyway, yeah. So I'm thinking there must be a picture of him somewhere. Um, so if anybody has any ideas on that, but I do thank Dave for um, the, the contact then at, at Sister Bay. Like I say, I'm sure it's not, it's certainly not lack of interest. I'm sure it's just lack of time at this point, but I feel Probably. like I'm using them. Um, what have you, are his dates? What are his, that? what are Thomas Diamond's dates? Uh, when did he live? Oh, um, let me, let's see. Let me look right on here. I have, uh, born 1844 and it was during the 1870s that he developed Door County. Thank you. Thanks. Have you searched the um, Advocate, um, the newspaper? Yeah, I found a lot. I found about 10 articles between the Advocate and I don't know, some, you know, a few other miscellaneous articles. The very interesting ones that I shared last time that it said um, he was a man of fun and wealth. <laughs> so I was looking into that. I don't know what, kind, you know, what they meant by that, but if he was fun and wealthy, I mean, those are two good things. <laughs> Yeah, that uh, lumbering was the main industry back in the beginning, so it wasn't um, what it is now, <laughs> which is right. tourism. <laughs> right, right. Well, anyway, so thank you all. Um, your suggestion, I followed up on every single one of them and found a lot of good stuff, so thank you so much. That's great, and you said you'll be coming when? In the summer? Well, hopefully September. September. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that should be a good time. Yep. <laughs> Fourth time's charm. <laughs> well, thank you. Anyone else have a story to tell? No one's done anything lately? I was going to say that <laughs> if you come late in September, then the second half of September, the leaves will have turned. Right. If you're, in North, if you're in North Carolina, you know what that is. So Yeah, no, yeah. fall is definitely my favorite season. Yeah. Um, but then we play this game with uh, our flights get canceled here for hurricanes. Oh, and yeah, then as yeah. soon as we start getting close to October, you know, we've got weather in Wisconsin and snow and whatever. So oh. yeah, it, it's, it's, it's a game. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, let's see, I've still been working on my Adamses <laughs> and going through that. And I, and I don't know if a couple months ago after Steve mentioned it about uh, uh, family tree maker, I did start using that and it is, I, I found it very helpful. Um, the best thing that I found with it is that you can take the, it takes the uh, uh, source um, citations from the ancestry uh, originals and puts it right yeah. into the source on, that you, and your, you know, the document in the family tree maker rather than, so I find that good because that, I'm not very good at writing sources, you know, citations. Yeah. And so that's a good way. That makes, saves me a lot of time, you know, by doing that. And uh, so. Have, have, have you switched out of Roots Magic? I have been, yes. I've been using, wow. I've not erased Roots, Roots Magic. I've been, as I go through these people, I move them over, you know, and Roots Magic has been what? An, a, over a year, almost two years working on Roots Magic 8. And yes. they still haven't, you know, put it out. Right. And I don't know what the problem is with it, but you know, what's the problem? But um, I don't Mark, know. do you know what the problem is? No, Oops. no. I was going to ask Tom if he's using uh, Ancestry to interact with Family Tree Maker. Yes. You yes. are. Yes. So I okay. I, I'm. I just dropped using Ancestry for a time because in the summer months I just don't have time for it. But um, yeah. Yeah. I'm not inclined to sit indoors <laughs> yeah. to work with Ancestry, but uh, having dropped Ancestry, I'm wondering if Family Tree Maker is of value without it. Well, I think you can still use it as your standalone. Mm -hmm. That's how I use it. I'm not yeah. linked. I've, I've used Family Tree Maker for years and I don't mm -hmm. link it to anything else. I just use it as my database. Okay. Yeah. I've and always used it too. 
together. You can so, also link it to, although it's not quite as clean, but you can link it to uh, um, Family Search too. It, yes. It's, it's yeah. not as clean. Well, actually, you can do it to, to all, all four of them. You can do it to My Heritage and also uh, Find Your Grave. Oh, not Find Your Grave. What's the other one? Find Your Past or whatever it is. You can do, and then also, I take that back. You can also do it to Google and really to almost any database, according to the literature. I haven't tried it, but according to the literature, they say you can do that, you know. Okay. So, okay. But anyway, I, you know, I found it very helpful. So I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Um, the only, well, the only cloud, if you will, on the horizon is that the last time it was really updated was 2019. And I don't know what that means. <laughs> I thought it was updated more recently. Uh, well, maybe so. Maybe it has been. Maybe they had one, but they, I don't they think call so. it. I think you so. know, they call it 2019. And yeah. that was kind of when Ancestry dropped them. And then that other company took it over and updated it. So they I don't have, know if that means that they're going to come out with a new one or what, you know, I mean, yeah. updated version. I don't know. I don't know if we need one or not. Probably with a little yeah. more. A uh, little bit more DNA in it, I suppose. Your version then includes the color scheming and all yeah. of that. Yeah, yeah, I think that's the latest one. Yeah, they added some features. Mm -hmm. but, Did they? Uh, okay. Yeah, I've, I've been very happy with that. I hate to leave old uh, what's Bruce at Roots Magic, but uh, um, you know, because I've met the guy. I was at you know a conference and he was there, so I met him. Nice fellow. Nice fellow. It was very pleasant. Of course, he has to be. But <laughs> sometimes they update things like that, and you really don't need all that. Oh, I don't I anyway. I don't need all the bells yeah. and whistles. Yeah, yeah. Right, I mean, it's exactly. like Word or Excel. I'm comfortable with Word or Excel from years ago, but yeah, you yeah. kind of have to keep updating. Yeah, yeah. 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 Same way with Windows. Yeah, and yeah. I found that to be true with with uh, Evernote. Was they updated it, and I. It was updated for really a business, not for a single yeah, that's the trouble. user standalone thing. And I found it not to be very good. Mm -hmm. Now they have put out some corrections in that, but I, you know, it's, it's there's more there than I need. So you spend too much time trying to keep it up to date, and you right. can't get into your research. You know, that's what right. drives me nuts. You know, is yeah. that you, you you have all these programs and they keep changing them, and you got to get them to work. And so, you know, so anyway. Well, according to Wikipedia, this latest update was 2019. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That oh, sounds two good. years. I guess two years isn't too bad, I guess. So in today's world. Know. And by the way, the library edition of Ancestry is still available till the end of the month. Oh, okay. oh, does that interact with the Family Tree Maker, Laura? No. The library version? I don't no. think so because think it's so. not attached to anyone. Okay. No. no, no, no. That's okay. the, the problem with those library editions. Yeah. 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 But you can uh, still see the documents. Yeah. So, yeah. If you don't right. have it, use it. Um, so, I had a person, oh, yes. Oh. I was just going to ask Tom again. I think Tom, you have um, Canadian ancestry history as well, correct? I have a. My wife does. She oh, no. has somebody who was born in um, just across the river from Detroit, in that part of Ontario, which I'm just starting to get into. You know, her. Let's see, who would that be? That would be her. Must be her great great grandfather on her on her on her mother's side, the paternal side of her mother's side. <laughs> I think Don Howard definitely has Canadian, you know, Who uh, Don Howard. Uh, Howard. Oh, Don Howard. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 My, my problem is that I have traced um, my, uh, I have quite a bit of uh, French Canadian ancestry that I have been able to locate um, Canadian uh, census documents and, and those kinds of things, but the and docu documents are okay, but you can't read any of them because they're all in French. French, yeah. And so you can see a name and you think, oh yeah, that's the name, but 
what else is it saying? What else can, and there's so many, uh, you know, how many Dion's can there be? Uh, hundreds. And so <laughs> you, you don't know if you're dealing with the right people or not. Yeah. So how do, you, how do you find somebody who can, oh yeah, I've got a lot of Dion history. So how yes. can you trace documents with, that you can't read? Um, it's difficult. I, yeah. Wasn't, wasn't Dion the one that had the five or six ki uh, uh, triplets? The quintuplets. It's the deal I mean, quint quintuplets. Quintuplets. Yeah. Quintuplets. yeah. yeah. Wow. Family more is that is part of the family. Yeah. <laughs> she also has ancestors uh, that live in St. Ignatius, Michigan, that, that built the Grand Hotel. Oh, they worked on it. Yes. Well, they they were experienced carpenters. Oh, really? oh. They moved, they're the Canadian group also that moved from New York. And that's another thing I've been trying to figure out is um, oh, they moved to New York and then because of a, a death in my, my maternal family, they consequently ended up in St. Ignis, um, the death being my mother's, my grandmother's mother who died in 1988 in New York, along with, and not at exactly the same time, but all of them died in 1980, 1888 in New York, the mother and two of her children. So I've been trying to figure out what happened in New York in 1988 diphtheria or something like that okay. I, you know i've been looking at census documents because some of them do ask for certain kinds of ailments but i haven't found anything like that i haven't seen any newspaper articles about any kind of pandemic or was it the last uh mort not mortuary what's it mortality census 1890 was it or 1880 uh, the 1891 is the one that's burned. Yeah, right? yeah, but there was there was a more. They also somewhere in there they did some other census, uh, censuses like mort uh, mortality and so on. Yeah, and oh. and uh, that one would be anybody that died within a year of the census. And I don't know if 1890 was the last or 1880. I don't have to look, but. I don't know. I'll Google it and yeah. see. <laughs> yeah. A mortality census, huh? Yeah, mortality. Because they mortality. one year, one yeah. time they did five or six other censuses other than just the slaves and the population, you know, mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so, I lost yeah. a, um in my family, we have an, an ancestor who died and three children all within a short time from diphtheria. I think in the late so mm. it could be that sort of thing. What time frame was that? I don't remember the year anymore, but it it would have been late eighteen hundreds. Mm -hmm. it, it twins and then another child and then the mother all died. Mm -hmm. It happens. <laughs> yeah. 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 That, yeah, that was in South Dakota. Mm. Yeah. Now, hearing about the pandemic of 1918, um, my great grandfather passed away in, in 1918. I'm just wondering if he may have been a victim of the pandemic back then. Yeah. Um, I, have, so. I have both my great grandmothers passed in Chicago from what they called the flu or pneumonia sometimes it was on the death certificate um, at, at both very early ages because that was what was unusual about that flu. They called it the Spanish flu then. So I think they were only 30 something. And that led to, um, on one ranch of my family, that whole side of the family um, going to the orphanage, which had generational impacts, as you can imagine, trauma and emotional impacts and, and social impacts, economic impacts. And the other side of the family, it was my grandpa was, um, you know, he was only one year old. So you always kind of wonder like what would have happened in those families, whether it's, you were talking about the mother and, and these twins, I heard you say, and, and dying at the same time. And, you know, you always kind of think like, oh, I wonder how that plays out, you know, in these later generations and how that has affected it. And if it wouldn't have happened, you know, what would have happened, so. Yeah, definitely some lessons from that pandemic. 
they weren't twins. They were about two years apart. Oh, okay. Sorry. But young, young children, right. And this, in my case, it was 1892 that they all died. Okay. No, wait, actually four children in 1892 and the mother all died in 1892. Really? Yeah. Well, and two were you're... twins, Laura, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. You said you were related to the Straubles. Or was that any relation to the Straubles that uh, have their name on the Green Bay Airport? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Because because Carol Straubel lives in Egg Harbor here. Yeah. 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 Okay. We don't know them well, but um, and related to um, what's the Elon Musk company? Oh yeah, her oh, yeah. son. Uh, right. Yeah, Carol uh, Straubel's son yeah. uh, was uh, chief engineer at Tesla. Yeah. But they parted ways. They parted ways about three years ago. Well, um, my great great grandfather was Albert Wise or Weisse. And he, he came from Germany um, in 1842. And his mother, his father died in, of, ty, ty, what did he die of? I, typhoid or something in Germany. And his mother remarried a Straubel, Frederick Straubel. Okay. So he came over first. And then they all followed a few years later with the half brothers and sisters. And then there's an intermarriage there of one of Albert's children with one of, um, they're his the cousins. So um, my great my grandmother's um, cousin was Dorothy Straubel Wittick, who was the founder of Heritage Hill in Green Bay. Very interested in history. Okay. history. So mm -hmm. um, that's okay. the relation there. And Austin Straubel was one of the cousins. And actually, it's really interesting. My grandfather was in. He didn't go to the war, World War One, but he was stationed in on the East Coast in Massachusetts in the Navy, learning to fly by wing, by wing planes. Wow. <laughs> so we have letters from him showing, he draws pictures of how they're constructed. They have to learn how they were constructed. So when they opened Austin Straubel um, Airfield in Green Bay, he was on the board right off the bat because he knew all about airplanes. <laughs> Way back. So that's, yeah. that's a good story, but we have a lot of you know letters from him and it's kind of fun to read those and see those. Yeah. But, uh, Carol Straubel's uh, son, who is the chief engineer at Tesla, yeah. the story is that he worked at the Alpine as a kid, growing yeah. a teenager, and he worked on some of the electric, electric cars. cars. Yeah. yeah. And actually, know. do you Go know ahead. Perry Andropolis here in Sturgeon Bay? No. Um, he had uh, that cherry, um, what is it, diner or something over there? And he oh, had sure. Her. Yes, yeah. right. Yeah. He wrote an article about that that I saw that was online about... Okay. Him working on those electric yeah right. <laughs> <All work. laughs> yeah yeah but we don't we don't know those travels at all directly right. we knew the older the older uh, generations <laughs> okay do you get free airline tickets <laughs> um, nope <laughs> <laughs> but that was um one of the cousins my grandmother's cousins was mildred Holman Straubel. And she wrote her memoirs of Green Bay and, you know, okay. all about the different shops downtown and all sorts of things. So I think it would be really interesting to put sure. that up. Yeah, yeah. have to see if there's any living relatives who <laughs> okay it. Yeah. More direct than I, we are. Yeah. So. Great. Yeah. Well, Marcel family, uh, uh, my ancestors on my grandmother's side, uh, they had the cherry orchard over where the federal buildings are now, uh, County Road S. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. Yeah. I probably did, yeah. And uh, they had nine nine children, five boys, uh, and, uh, no, five girls and four boys. And uh, so there's quite a history there that evolved from that original family, the Marcells. Um, Belgium. Belgium, yeah. But I think that's all documented through the library at this point in time. Mm -hmm. I, re I really didn't have to do any research. Okay. Someone else before me has done it all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of people working on the Belgian heritage. Did mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I did with the people that are restoring the school down there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a pretty interesting history. Um, 
I started reading into a little bit of the history of the Catholic um, leadership down there with Abbot Pennings, the man who became Abbot Pennings and the reason he came there from Switzerland. And it's a pretty, um, pretty interesting story. <laughs> <laughs> I get carried away with different things like that. There's all there's a lot of interesting stories in the ancestors. Yeah. You know? yeah. So maybe somebody will look back at us 50 years from now or 100 years from now and say we're interesting. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I doubt it too. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't feel interesting. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Well, but it's always those mundane things my um, aunt was working on. We're doing uh, like a family history cookbook. And she said, well, let's put some pictures in there of people cooking. And she couldn't believe that there were any pictures of people cooking. I said, well, you know, it was a chore. They were just trying to get it done. It's not like Instagram foodies now. We take pictures of everything we're eating all the time. You know, and we're super into being a chef or whatever. I said, like, you know, they were just cooking all the time. People weren't taking pictures. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. And, um, you know, they we have this heritage garden over at Crossroads here in town. Mm -hmm. Is anyone familiar with that? Mm -hmm. And um, I I know that um, the lady who runs it now um, changed it from the rows of plants to the German style gardening, which is squares. Oh, and um, she said she was having trouble finding articles about it because kitchen gardens were not considered high end, like some of these fancy Victorian gardens. So people didn't necessarily document them the way they would have a fancy garden, same thing. Mm -hmm. Yet everyone had one because that's how you got a lot of your food, right? Yeah, that's where you got yeah. your vegetables, yeah. Well, look at, look at how you spend every day. I mean, that's the stuff you don't document. I am amazed at the houses we lived in. I never took enough pictures of the inside of the houses that we lived in, Remember. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, it's you don't even think of doing it um, yeah. no. well, do when ahead. you move in or something but you know <laughs> yeah I was going to say because I've been working on my narratives um Laura was talking about that a little bit and I'm trying to think of things like that right that I think are boring or won't matter but it almost ends up more like pop culture because I'm trying to think well what are the things they're going to be interested in you know future generations reading this oh okay that you know I had a manual typewriter and then it was an electric typewriter you know that we didn't have computers so I try to think of things like that that just seem as you said during the course of your day but they're going to be a big deal but you don't know because you're living in it right now you don't know what's going to be the big deal um, so yeah it's interesting well, take take a picture of your keyboard because that's going to go away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's definitely going to go away, and the mouse is going to go away too. <laughs> yeah. Just well, be some able people's. To, you'll yeah. just look at the computer and be able to think about it, and, you know, <laughs> and it'll show up on the screen. Uh, <laughs> it's scary. Yeah. It is scary. Yeah. Um, I was just explaining all of how my first employment to our son <laughs> just quite a story in itself just trying to describe what it was like being a woman and getting a job in the late sure. 1950s and yeah you know being asked questions about what religion were you and uh, working at a university um after five months of pregnancy i had to leave because those were the rules and insurance didn't cover pregnancies and yeah you know, they don't believe these kinds of things, but that's the way it was. Well, how about women's names? I mean, we have, I have all of these things and it's Mrs. You know, Albert Carlson. And I mean, yeah. no yes. women's first yes. names at all. And just, everybody was Larry. That was me after I got married. I was Mrs. Daniel Farwell for years, you yeah. know. Yeah. And, you know, what happens to yourself? <laughs> I'm reading obituaries of, of family members not that far back, that that's what they are. Well, what was their first name? And what was their right. maiden name? No idea. Mm -hmm. No idea. And speaking of, um, sorry, nar narratives, um, a few, was it a week or two ago, they had a program on Right on Door County, um, which is a writing group here in um, Door County, a uh, program given by um, Peggy Williams, I believe her name was. And she was talking about using genealogy research for writing fiction or nonfiction, either way. 
and it was really, really well done. She gave you a whole lot of background on it. Unfortunately, they did not, they do not want to put it online for everybody. Oh, too bad. I asked and he said, no, he wasn't going to post it. Um, But it was really excellent because she talked about character development and, you know, the arc of the story and all sorts of how to present it, the story so that it's believable and, um, I really wish, um, I'd love to have her come back and talk here, maybe. Or I wonder if you could email it. Like, would they feel no. comfortable? No, not even through email. Not yeah, he, email. Um, okay. I asked Jared Santek, who's the director over there, and he said, no, they weren't um, putting it online for anyone. Yeah, But, but that was excellent. Yeah, and that would be an interesting because that's part of what gets overwhelming. I mean, not only does it just turn into this beast you know you start the narrative and then of course the further you go it's almost that organizational problem of now I've got to do the background on this line oh this per-. you know I kind of would go to who married who and then I would stop at that line and then go to the background of let's say the matrilineal line and then kind of come back and finish the family and I thought I don't know if oh, that's yeah. too confusing for readers but yeah. I was getting overwhelmed and so I was looking at other options um, even like a digital scrapbook or something more like a photo book of, that people use today with their digital pictures, like Shutterfly or something like that. Um, but there have been some really good ideas on Facebook, the organized genealogist, and people have done these amazing versions of these scrapbooks. And I thought, oh my gosh, I don't even know how I would do something like that. Um, but even, are any of you familiar with Dear Myrtle? Yes. Okay. I've, I've she, heard of it. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, exactly it's, a, it's it pretty yeah. popular that I didn't know. Yeah. But anyway, um, because of COVID, she started on January 1st, she calls it 52 things. And her husband got her this steamer trunk, this old steamer trunk with hidden compartments. And each week, she's going to do 52 things, one a week of a family heirloom and attach the story to it. And she does these like all unique mini journals. And then she places it in the steamer trunk. And of course, during COVID, her grandkids couldn't visit. So she would uh, videotape it. But I thought, oh my gosh, you know, something like that. Where do I mean, you see this? It's, it's called Dear Myrtle. Dear I think Myrtle. if you just go, you know, Google it, but she's also got a Facebook. But so an example was she was telling the story of her father who was bear hunting, you know, back when in Washington. And she has the um, skin of the bear. Now, of course, that didn't fit in the steamer trunk. That was kind of a little joke, but <laughs> she, she made the book look like, oh, the outside was the formica, like what reminded her of, you know, her dad used to have in his kitchen. And then she wrote the story of when he was a young boy, he um, accidentally slingshot or something, a robin. He said he wasn't going to hunt, but then they needed to hunt for food. And then she talks about the bear stew or whatever. And she just does all these really clever things. Oops. Oops. Last two. Oops. She froze. Last two. Thanks for there. the grandkids, like, locate, you know, wherever on the Washington map. And, oh, can you find on the census? She's kind of like also teaching them how to do the genealogy. And I just thought, oh my gosh, I don't have that many heirlooms really. But kind of like what Laura was talking about, you're really supposed to pick like a theme. So it doesn't become this, you know, so-and-so was born, so-and-so, yeah. you know, married, yes. you know, but that you have, oh, we've had, you know, bears in our family for whatever. Um, but then that becomes overwhelming itself because those are like each little mini projects or picking the theme or, you know. So I wondered how, how people were making progress on those kind of narratives. <laughs> Well, I wish yeah, this, right. you could hear this talk because she really gave you an outline and um, she's a teacher as it is. And um, she's writing about her, her Canadian ancestors. There is a group uh, called the Fiduroy, Fiduroy, the girls of the Kings or women of the King. Yes, I know about that. Yeah, oh, the, is it the 1600s. Yep. Uh-huh. And so, and apparently there's a bunch of people like this um, mm-hmm. who lived in Canada. And um, so she's writing that kind of story, mm-hmm. um, which sounded fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. In my, in my local genealogy group here, we have a member and she was telling us that story. And I thought, oh, that is just crazy. Yeah. 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 But she's writing a novel. She did address both novel writing and nonfiction. It, it has definitely turned into a book, for sure. <laughs> well, what's his name? That, that fellow that talked about the Camp Randall. 
he was using genealogy too. Yeah. 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 To, to write his book, you know. That was where, very, very disappointing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got yeah. to write that down. Yeah, I read the book. It's it's got a lot of facts in it. He really did a lot of research. Yeah, yeah. mostly historical facts. Yeah. 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 Dan's great grandfather was in the second Wisconsin, which was the Iron Brigade, and they oh. they were the first unit to be at um, uh, Camp Randall. Um, and we lived one block to, from Camp Randall for I don't know from 1992 till. Uh, two, 2001 when I came up here so oh. we were really close and they had one of the reenactments there at the time of the um, sesquicentennial Wisconsin's mm -hmm. and so they had they actually camped out on Camp Randall oh. you know with oh, the wow. reenactment so we went over there and yeah. Dan's great grandfather he he was uh you know he was he was there the entire time and uh he's and then he went to a different unit after they disbanded the second in uh 1864 because there were so many losses um battle losses and disease and you know i mean it was it was amazing he survived it so yeah a lot I of mean, that's diseases. such a personal story you know just about him Mm -hmm. We could, I could write a book just about him. There you go. Yeah. Nobody, That's and nobody has. That's the trouble. Yeah. I also I have, as a student lived there, lived a block off Camp Randall too. So oh, yeah. is that right? Uh, oh, yeah. On Lathrop Street. I lived uh, on Lathrop. Lathrop Street. Yep. And also yeah, Lathrop. That's exactly where it was. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, speaking of because you, you're right about using other sources. My grandma on her typewritten sheet, of course, because she, that's what they had. And I'm thinking of, okay, she wrote down some memories. How do I incorporate that into, you know, mine? And it almost becomes an organizational thing because right now when somebody talks about a certain ancestor, you know, I look, it's almost like not having a clean closet. I have to look five different places. And oh my four. gosh. You know, so I'm trying to like, okay, I just want to, you know, somebody says one name, I want to have it like all in one place. Well, then that became its own technology challenge because- yeah. Supposedly Adobe can translate, maybe some of you know this, text to an editable document. Like if I scan the typewritten page, that it could put it into Word, I guess, not pages. Really? Wow. That's called OCR or yeah, it's OCR yeah. recognition. OCR. Yeah. Well, that's not that's not Acrobat Reader. That's the other one. You got to get the upgrade. Well, see, that a was a lot of scanners can do that. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's what I have to check because I don't want to use a voice to text because I feel like I spend almost as much time editing and correcting. Me too. I, I had trouble with that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Because you know, there's no OCR period. Is... How do you put a period? Right. You have to say period. <laughs> I found that out. But okay, that's good. That's good to know because that was one of my struggles. And then incorporating the pictures we talked about, you know, Tom wrote about, he want, he wrote about one person and that worked a little better. Um, so you can get into that, but okay. Yeah, that, that, that helps a lot. Thank no, you. No, I haven't, I haven't done any more. <laughs> well, it's, everything's time consuming. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you don't get, you never get finished. Gosh. Well, yeah. I know right now my great, my granddaughter, one of my granddaughters is turning 18 and I am going through 18 years of pictures. Oh, trying yeah. to find pictures for each year because I'm going to make a photo album of each year of her life. I that mean, is. just that top. I mean, that is really a project. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got four boxes of well, big legal size boxes. You know those that you put files in of pictures and 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 family. I wouldn't say they're heirlooms, but family memories. Okay, and yeah. <laughs> scan you know, you my photos. To, yeah, Do you scan start my doing photos. that. Yeah, and then you well, you know you want you look through the good ones and you want to scan those, so that takes time, you know. Well, yes. And then, you know, it's it's. it's we we sent five hundred. We sent five hundred slides to scan my photos this this winter, because we yeah. discovered my husband's. He was in Berlin in 1962, 63, 64, oh. 63, 64. And also he was in Africa at the time of independence in 1959 as a college kid. And we found his slides in perfect condition because they were um, uh, uh, Kodachrome. Kodachrome slides really yeah. lasted. Yeah. And yeah, so we, so that was among the 500 slides that we uh, 
that we had um, digitized. So we just got them back. I mean, that's, but now I have to put them in order. I mean, they, you know, they just how, came back how they were, how that, they were scanned. How did that work out? How did that great. work out? Did, it worked they, out great. They, okay. They, they numbered them or something. You know, no, they them don't in. number them. They, you put them in order. You have, you put them in bands of uh, uh, 50, something like that in the box. They, they send okay. them, they send you a box okay. and then you put in, um, uh, yeah, I think bands of 50. I, um, I put rubber banded 50 slides together. Of course, you have to choose the slides that you're going to be sending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. that that selection process is is another thing. That's fine. Yeah, and got, uh, and then it takes them a couple months to, to get it back to you. It takes them a couple months to yeah. send it back to you. But I mean, it's a really good way to take care of, um, you know, numbers of pictures. Yeah. 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 Is it pricey, Gretchen, or is it yeah. Fair, yeah. fairly? Yeah. Uh, now I can't remember. Sometimes they have good deals, but just mm -hmm. uh, look at Google, scan my photo, and you can get yeah. an idea. Yeah, there's a couple of them oh. out there. And at I'm one sure. time, they were like 25 cents a slide. And I don't know where that is, if that's, you know, yeah. where that is I, now. I can't, you know. I can't remember now what I yeah. paid. Yeah. But well, I the, have a, I, you know, I have a slide scanner here. And I could do it, but well, <laughs> the trouble is, there. if you do that, I do too. But that's you know it incredibly takes forever. laborious. You do it yeah. four four at a time, you know. Yes, you can. <laughs> okay, and then you got to number them. You got to put them, you know. File them, yeah. I, file I name my files. That. Yeah. <laughs> I've got oh. enough work for another lifetime. My oh, sister yeah, scanned over nine hundred um, photos from a family album one time. Oh. Yeah. A lot of work. <laughs> yeah. But you know, well, you got to write something up. You know, you know, you have. I to have one hundred and thirty-four thousand images on my computer. One hundred and thirty-four thousand. Well, you're yep. ahead of me. I only have about thirty-five thousand. You're ahead of me. <laughs> well, I've been doing it for twenty years, or whatever it's yeah. been, or more. Hmm. Make sure you back them how do you, up. How do you know how many images you have? Because the, te the computer tells you. <laughs> and you got yeah. every one of them backed so up. So you could search and find out how many JPEGs you had, for instance? Um, yeah. Well, I, I don't think it could tell me that because they're, they're, most of them are JPEGs. But there's a, I have, unfortunately, I started doing T, TIF TIF files because oh. somebody said that yeah. was the best way, way to preserve oh, yeah. things. And, and yeah, but the the space it takes up and the practicality of it is crazy. I mean, how are you going to be using these pictures? You have to think about how you're going to be using them. Well, yeah, if, you're only, use, just, if you're only going to make a three by five or a four yeah. by six or even five by seven, you don't need TIFF. No. You know? If you're right. going to do a great, great, humongous thing, yeah, they yeah. need TIFF. Yeah. For the right. newspaper project, um, all of those are TIFFs originally. Oh, yeah. But then when you uh, view them, you can turn them into PDFs and things like yeah. that. But the right. uh, database is all tips but for that does purpose. Take up a lot of room. So. Yeah, that takes up tremendous amount of room. Yeah. Well, that's why when I've had computer problems this spring now with my new computer, I had to back up. Now I have them all backed up on an auxiliary hard drive. It has four terabytes on the hard drive. I'm never going to run out of that room. And now I'm surprised. putting them on, uh, I'm putting them on one drive. Um, so they're being copied now very slowly at our, oh, yeah. you know, at our pace. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, let's see what else I have. I had them being backed up by Carbonite, but then when I switched to my new computer, I had two screens and it couldn't do or two hard or two drives. It couldn't do that. But I've got copies. I am. I'm, I'm back. I'm backed up now. I think. Um, I How are you in organizing them? them? Well, my yeah, my files are, are fairly organized. I would redo it if I could. That's the trouble. I, I have a sort of structure under family names and then within family names. And for example, I've got Farwell Historical. And so I've got uh, lots of different files under there. And then within each, I try to have a documents piece under, you know, the, the name of the person and the family. It, it's it's kind of it's kind of a mess, but it actually has some it has some utility because I did it from the beginning, kind of. Yeah, that helped. We could we um, could spend hours and hours talking about organization. 
of yeah. their files. It's, it's, I know. That's Not only that, um, in naming conventions, I took a oh, class yeah. on digital preservation at UW, or it wasn't a class, it was a grant I got for a workshop. And um, right now, I happen to be running um, a checksum on all the newspaper files, and you should be doing that periodically. I do it two times a year. And what that does is it runs through all of the files and makes sure they have not been corrupted. Oh. This can be corrupted very easily. What's it called? There's a couple different ones. The newspaper has a files, the uh, software has a built-in um, component that is called checksum, but there is a um, online site called Fixity, which allows you to um, run the same sort of thing with all different files. Fixity, huh. F-I-X-I-T-Y. There's a free version of it out there. And so I have a bunch of um, files here that I have to do run Fixity on. I just started the checksums for the newspapers and then um, I'll run the Fixity for like the Door County Memory Project, which I put online and things like that. So um, you can do it yourself, but it's it sure. takes a little bit of work. And basically what it does is it runs through, keeps a sort of record of what everything looked like. And then when you run it in six months, it'll tell you if anything was changed or corrupted. Oh. So it gets very complicated, but yeah. if you think about it, if you really want to preserve something that's important, you have to start thinking in these terms. And they also have something called the three, two, one rule, which is, um, and I can't even remember, two formats, three locations, one at a distance, there's all <laughs> sorts of rules for these things. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's what that's what Quantum says. You should, uh, what's his name from Quantum says you should have three cloud, basically three offsite sources or backups, and then two close, you know, and then you're of course you got the one on your computer. So, so it's like two formats. For example, I have a portable hard drive, huge terabyte one, and then I have them um, on the servers across the street or the Door County servers, they gave us a special part of their server. So that's another format. And um, so you want to have multiple versions of things. We yeah, can go over yeah. some of that stuff if you want sometime. Yeah. The things we covered in the class I took. But I think oh. we're over an hour now. So yep. maybe yep. we wrap it up. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Very good. Interesting. Thank you, everybody. Today. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Thank Have you. a good Our summer. Thursday. See you in July. We'll, we'll Bye. See you yeah. July first. Or July. Yeah, July first. All right. Yep. Thank you. Bye okay. Now. Bye. 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 Now.